what is my impact? What is what I'm doing today going to do tomorrow and the next day and the day after that and five years from now and 75 years from now? So there's a lot to think about with respect to that because it all matters. Everything you do matters. This episode is brought to you by my book, Speak From Within. Review what's inside and purchase it at isoldat.com slash speak hyphen book. Hello and welcome to the Creative Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Whether you're writing the first sentence of a story or solving the climate crisis, you need to think in new ways. On the show, I interview peak performers who are coming up with those creative solutions. Through creativity, action, inspiration, and innovation, they're changing the world. I also bring you ideas and techniques that you can use to unlock your potential to do the same. And now, let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to another Vegan Life Solutions episode of the Creative Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Thank you so much for taking the time today to listen. So I have a a restaurant review for you today, but first I want to talk about something that is becoming more and more prevalent. Back when I started doing this, we were often told, no, you're not allowed. But now a lot more places have gotten on board and they realize it's the thing to do. And here's what it is. Many years ago, my husband and I started bringing Tupperware to restaurants when we went out. Why? Because I didn't want to bring home uh, plastic or styrofoam to go containers. I hated it. And so we started bringing it. And one of the things that happened with restaurants back down in the DC area, when we lived down there was we got the, not just the message, but the specific message that you are not allowed to do that. It's against health department codes. You have to use one of our to go containers. What? I remember being shocked by that. No, I should be able to bring my own container and put my leftovers into it and then take it home and heat it up and use it. And yeah, that would be amazing. That to me is the thing that we all should be doing actually, because anything you get, whether it's paper, reusable, compostable, or or styrofoam or whatever, it's a resource that has been used to put food in so that you can take it home and heat it up and eat it later because you couldn't eat all the food you got. Now, should we have smaller portions at restaurants? I'm not advocating for that necessarily because I can't possibly judge for anybody else how much food they do or don't eat at a sitting. But I encourage you to start bringing your own Tupperware. Now, one of the things that I don't know, and this is true, is I don't know if there are really environmentally friendly uh, to-go containers. I'm sure there are. There must be like bamboo or something like that. But think about it. If you have, uh, you can't really take glass, right? You could, I suppose, take glass with you. But can you really? Can you take glass with you everywhere you go in case you want to bring it home? I personally drop things all the time. I imagine that what would happen if I tried to do a glass container is uh, it would probably (laughs) it would probably have problems for me, right? I would probably have a lot of problems. So something that you could potentially do is uh, silicone. Another thing that you can do is take silicone containers and use them. They're a little bit more environmentally friendly, I think. And they're not plastic. So that's another thing that you can do is, is sort of the gradations of the of the containers that you can take with you. I love using silicone. I use it instead of plastic whenever I can. But instead of silicone and plastic, I use glass as much as I can, but I don't want to have to carry it with me in case it breaks. And, and that's the problem with glass is that it's so breakable, so fragile. So you can take a Tupperware with you so that you're not, so that you're using a reusable resource, even if it's plastic, but even more so you can take silicone. And if you are brave, I guess, braver than I, you can take glass. I just, I can't personally. And I have yet to find what I would probably like is a metal container with a silicone lid that fits airtight so that things don't spill all over the place in your bag. And that's another thing that I do is, of course, bring reusable grocery bags with me. I usually carry a reusable grocery bag no 
no matter where I go, it's a little one. It folds right up. And that way, if I have to go to the store real quick, I don't have to use anybody else's bag. And also, if I go to a restaurant and I get a carry out or I get a leftover container filled, my leftover container filled, I can actually just break my little bag out of my backpack and there I have my bag with me and all is well. I do the same thing and I'm gonna put links to all of this stuff in the show notes uh, because I think it's important for us to have easy access. I also have a cloth napkin that I bring everywhere so that I don't have to use the paper napkins at, at restaurants. Often there are little those little dispensers that you can take your paper napkin out of. I just bring my own cloth and then I take it after I use it. I take it home. I wash it. I stick another one in my bag. Bandanas work really well for that just as a napkin. It can be a cotton bandana works terrific as a napkin for you so that you don't have to use paper napkins. It saves trees a lot. And I also carry utensils. I carry foldable utensils. Uh, I only carry the spoon and the fork. I don't carry a knife just because it's sharp and I don't want to injure myself. So, because I'm klutzy, <laughs> it happens that way. So that's something else that you can do. And again, I'm going to put the links to some of this stuff in the show notes. And none of this is, I'm not an affiliate of any of this. I just want to give you some resources. Because you know me, I do only uh, have affiliate marketing stuff with only things that I adore and love to use. But at, right now, it's just a couple of things like Canva, Podbean, and uh, Brain FM. I don't have an affiliate with any, like with Amazon or anybody else like that. But I do, I will give you the links so that you can grab that stuff. And uh, and I've got a little resource for you. It's five way, five easy ways to conserve water right this second that you can do with minim, minimum fuss, minimum muss. Uh, and that's going to be, that link to that is going to be in the show notes also. But you can see what I'm saying is like, if if you bring your own little metal containers, my husband, for example, bought these little metal chopsticks, these little foldable metal chopsticks that he carries everywhere. You can also have a silicone or a metal straw that you can use. Again, not plastic. I, I used to carry a straw with me, but then I sort of uh, broke myself away from the need to use a straw when I drink uh, out of a glass. Nowadays, I use what I call adult sippy cups, like those, <laughs> those reusable cups that you can have. Uh, so yeah, I love, love, love using these utensils and carrying a cloth napkin and carrying my own little, I'm calling it Tupperware. I know that's a registered trademark, but you know what I mean, your own to-go containers, uh, your own napkin, your own little bag, so that you don't have to use the resource, the non-renewable resource like uh, plastic or uh, paper or any of that. It's all there with you. Carry it in a little bag. It's not heavy. Uh, you know, an empty Tupperware container is not heavy at all. When it's full, you would have been carrying it anyway. So it's not, it's no, it's no skin off our noses, as they say, if we carry the, the Tupperware container from home to the place and then carry everything out. Used to be, as I said, restaurants would frown on that. Now they don't seem to as much. I think they still seem to frown on giving them the Tupperware container to fill because that come, that brings it back to uh, the, uh, the kitchen or whatever and they don't want to contaminate the kitchen. I get that. So I always just say, I will put my food away myself. Uh, and that way... I don't have to carry uh, a non-renewable resource container. And I really like that. It makes me very happy to have that. Otherwise, I feel like I'm contributing to something I don't want to contribute to. So I want to be purposeful about every kind of environmental action I take. Being vegan, this is a Vegan Solutions episode, of course. Being vegan means that I'm not just looking out for the animals, truly. To me, it means that it, this is an ethical stance and the ethical stance is I want to live and walk very softly on the earth because if I use these resources, going back to the animals, if I use these resources up, then there are fewer resources left for the rest of the living beings on the planet. So all in all, it, there, is a, there is a cascading effect here that whatever decision you make right this second is going to impact and affect many decisions and many lives later on. And I'm not saying whether or not you use this one paper napkin, it's going to mean that the last tree is going to die uh, and never we'll never have trees again in 75 years. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if we look at it like that, like what is my action going to do long term? How I'm really thinking about this now. If you listen to Monday's episode, you probably uh, heard that a little bit. This notion of what is my impact? What is what I'm doing today going to do tomorrow and the next day and the day after that? 
and five years from now and 75 years from now. So there's a lot to think about with respect to that because it all matters. Everything you do matters. And that reminds me that reminds me about the TV series Angel, uh, believe it or not. There's a wonderful conversation between Angel and a cop, and they're sitting after Angel has had an epiphany. <laughs> and he's realized that nothing you do matters. And he said, you know, if nothing you do matters, then the only thing that matters is what you do. And a single act of kindness is the greatest thing in the world. Uh, that's David Boreanaz as Angel in the TV show Angel from the early aughts. And I think that's an important facet of all of this. We have to think about everything is important on some level to someone or something. And the more we do that, the better. So there you go. All right, cool. I wanted to get that little bit of the Vegan Life episode out for you so that you have that. And again, go to the show notes. In the link, you will see, no, <laughs> in the show notes, you will see the links. There we go. In the show notes, you will see the links to a couple of different uh, to-go container sets and a couple of different little folding silverware sets, uh, metal, and a bandana works great. You don't have to go buy a shishi fufu cloth napkin. You can, you can grab a bandana that's probably sitting in your drawer at home and put that in your backpack or wallet or purse and just have that as your personal napkin and then use it and then take it home, wash it, take another one, use it and so on and so on. All right, cool. So here we are now with today's review, restaurant review. By the way, how fun is it that I need to go? I need to go to a new restaurant every single week so I can bring you a review. Oh, darn. <laughs> That's very exciting for me. This week's restaurant is Pure Grit on uh, 20, I want to say 25th and Lexington. It is uh, an all vegan barbecue joint. And so there are things that I want to say. First of all, I like the food very much. Do I love the waffle cut fries? You have to work really hard for me not to love waffle cut fries. So I love their waffle cut fries. When I went, I had the mushroom sort of platter. It was mushrooms with barbecue sauce on them, a waffle and baked potato and coleslaw. Now, what I loved, I I like the waffle very much, although there, there's no syrup. So that's something to bear in mind. Like there's no maple syrup or whatever. So bear that in mind. The mushrooms were good. Uh, I enjoyed them. They said that they were crispy tipped. They were not crispy tipped. So that's something else. The place itself, uh, you know, again, it's a joint, so it's small. The tables are, uh, there are only a few tables, but I still, wow, there's a there's a all vegan barbecue joint, yay. So if you like that sort of thing, you're gonna love it. They have a tofu platter. They have all sorts of stuff like that. They have baked beans. It's, it's like Texas barbecue, but you know, cruelty free. Yay. So yeah, uh, the mashed potatoes were really good. The coleslaw, I like sweet coleslaw. This was not very sweet, but if you like sort of a little bit on the tangier side of coleslaw, you're going to love their coleslaw. And the waffle was a waffle, which to this day as a vegan, whenever I can have pancakes or waffles, cause I love breakfast for dinner, shout out for breakfast for dinner. If you love that too. You are my people. Uh, so yeah, if you if you like breakfast for dinner or that sort of thing, the waffle is great. It was it was delicious. The young woman was very sweet who served us. All of that was great. Here's the thing that I'm concerned about and I am finding that I have trouble with. And this is not a pure grit thing. And this is, seems to be a, this is the kind of register we now have. And so therefore we cannot uh, deviate from it thing. Uh, I wanted to get waffle cut fries instead of mashed potatoes, right? So here's the thing. Uh, the sides, it's coleslaw, and I'm just going to give the prices because that's what they are. I'm not telling tales out of school. The, the coleslaw, the mashed potatoes, the fries are all $6 a piece. No, the fries are $7. And so I said, okay, I would like waffle cut fries. Can you give me waffle, cut, charge me the extra dollar and give me waffle cut fries instead of mashed potatoes. And she said, uh, and she's looking at the register and she's going, I don't know how to do that. And I could see, I could watch her face kind of going, I'm not sure how to do that. And then she said, no, it's not possible. And I get that restaurants get to make their own rules. I totally understand that. But that's one of the things as a customer that I'm looking for. I'm looking for, are you willing and able to work with me on my bizarre little 
requests because I, I've often, I've told this to people in restaurants when I go in, I am a weird orderer. I, ha- I like things exactly how I like them. If you give me what I want, I will tip incredibly well. And I do. I have tipped 50% of the bill easy. Uh, one time I, I doubled I doubled the bill and just gave 100% of the tip, which to me is a lot, actually. I'm not the wealthiest person in the world. But if you give it to me the way I want it and it's tasty, I will be your very best friend. And so in that moment at Pure Grit, the young woman had a choice. Now, she's, you know, she doesn't know me. Why, why would she? She And so, and I don't know if she's empowered. Like the person on the front lines is not often empowered to make these kinds of executive decisions. She could have figured out a way to go, okay, we're going to get her the waffle cut fries and charge her the dollar because I offered charge me extra. I'm fine with that. Uh, I just didn't want to pay a whole other $7 to get mashed potatoes and waffle cut fries. Do you see the difference there, the distinction? And uh, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, when we had different kinds of registers, the person would have just gone, yeah, I totally know what you want. I'm going to sub this. I'm going to charge you the extra dollar. You're good to go. You're going to get what you want. And on some level, you have to decide whether or not you as a place of business are going to focus on and want to focus on making your customers happy. If what you're interested in is, well, what I really want to do is make it the way I want to make it and I sell it and people take what I give them, kind of like Heartbreakers does, uh, and I'll talk about that in a second, then that's what you've decided. But what that does for me as a customer who does need special orders, because, for example, bell peppers aren't everything and I'm very, very sensitive to them and cannot eat them then I'm screwed. If I come in and you say there's no, you know, if it's pre-mixed, I get it. But if you tell me no, just because, you know, I'm not going to do that to the chef, I'm not going to say you have to leave bell peppers out of this, I won't come back to your establishment again. This is not to say that I will never come back to Pure Grid again. I can see going back there again, but I'm not in a hurry to, right? Versus places like Organic Grill and Veggie Grill and Peace Food and so many other amazing places, Chef Guy Vaknin's, all of his places, they are totally willing to work with me on my various sensitivities and on the way that I want my food. Because in New York City, especially, you're paying top dollar. None of this stuff is inexpensive. And that means to me that the customer should get at least a little bit more say in what their food is. And this brings me to Heartbreakers. When I went to Heartbreakers and I asked them to put some sliced tomatoes on on my sandwich. I love tomatoes on my sandwich. I find most sandwiches are too dry without tomatoes. And I, I have a thing for lycopene, I guess, because I need to have tomatoes <laughs> just about every meal. And I can like tomatoes and potatoes both. I can have for every single meal I eat. Uh, and I asked, can, can you do this? And she was like, no, we can't deviate from the menu. And I'm like, I am willing to pay extra. Can you give me some tomatoes on a plate? I will pay for a side of tomatoes. And she said, no. And I went, wow. And I... I really had to wonder and worry about whether or not I was going to go back there again. Now, they're in Bushwick. If you're a New Yorker, you know, they're in Bushwick and they're one of the prominent sort of uh, restaurants, all vegan restaurants in that area. And I kind of had to decide for myself, do I want to keep going back there? Because that's not a way I as a customer want to be treated, right? I do want you to work with me, particular since I'm willing and happy to pay for the thing that I'm asking for. I'm not asking for this to happen without any sort of, uh, uh, you know, extra payment coming from me. Totally willing to pay extra. I'm happy to pay extra. Can I have some tomatoes? No. And I wonder, you know, the, the way it was described to me was that the chef has a certain taste that they want you to have. And so therefore we're not going to muss with it. And I went, okay, if the chef has this certain taste they want me to have, but the taste is dry, then I'm not going to go back there, right? (laughs) And they have the best waffle cut fries, uh, vegan waffle cut fries in the city. So that makes me really bummed out. But but I don't want to go back there that often because uh, I do want my food the way I want it. And I understand the whole, oh, I've planned this menu thing, but your sandwiches are dry and the tomatoes help them. And so there's something to think about there particularly if the customer is willing to pay extra for the thing. And the same thing with Pure Grit. She could have charged me a dollar extra, but I think she looked at the register and went, I don't know how to do that. And so she said it wasn't allowed. And to me, again, that's the kind of thing that it behooves management of restaurants to have a policy on. And and for me personally, I would love it if the policy was work with your customer and make sure the customer gets what they want. 
but you know, if you've, if you're a restaurant owner and you've decided, no, that's not what I'm going to do. That's cool. It just means that I, as someone who goes out a lot and runs a group that goes to different vegan restaurants to support those restaurants will not suggest your restaurant anymore as a place to go. Right. And so there is a there is a supply demand push pull thing happening here. And I actually have said that I'm never going to review restaurants I don't like on this show. I'm not trying to tell you I don't like Pure Grit. I like it fine. I just think that there are certain things when you are running a restaurant that you need to have established policies on. If there are no substitutions whatsoever, I understand that. If there are no substitutions whatsoever and the person offers to pay for it, maybe you should think about whether or not that's a thing. Like, oh, I yes, you can have tomatoes on your sandwich, but it'll be another $10. Then I would go, oh, that's way too much money and I'll do something else. But if you went, okay, that's another two bucks. And I went, okay, I really want tomatoes on the sandwich. I'm willing to pay the $2, then let's go, right? So so I'm, again, this is not a negative thing about the restaurant. It's a, it's a question about how we do these policies and whether or not restaurants can afford, in New York City especially, can afford to not have that extra little bit of customer service. Restaurants in New York City come and go and we... I'm, I, you know, Champ's Diner just closed and I just found out that they're probably going to be reopening. The head chef, I think, bought the place. And so it's going to be coming back, I think, with a similar menu. And I will have to review it when that comes out again, when that is open again. Little Chocolate Apothecary also, I think, just got saved. Uh, some uh, A chef in D.C., it looks like, is buying it or has bought it. And that deal may, have, may be done by the time you listen to this episode. So we're looking at how businesses run themselves from a vegan standpoint, but also just from a business standpoint. Are you doing what you need to do to serve your customers? And there are lots of customers, I'm sure, who take what to take what you're offering and go, yep, that's it. That's all I want. And even if I wanted something else, you say no. So I'm just going to move on. And then there are people like me who are going to be the thorn in your side who are going to go, you know what? As a restaurant, as a business, I think because so many restaurants in New York City fail so often, it behooves you to think about how you are serving your customers and what you are doing to make sure that they are having a good experience. Very, very important. So Pure Grit, I love you, but I'll be honest, I'm not sure I'm going to go back as often because of my experience. Same thing with Heartbreakers. I love you. Your waffle cut fries are the bomb diggity, as <laughs> my nephew used to say. Uh, but I, I I don't go there as often either, in part because I want the restaurants to work with me. If they're not interested in working with me, I'm not as interested in, in going to them. So the food is good. If the service, if the customer-oriented perspective isn't there, that's another thing that I look for when I review restaurants. And Pure Grit, the food was really pretty good. Uh, Heartbreakers, I think the food is really great, except for the lack of tomatoes on most of the sandwiches, except for the poor Wayne. The poor Wayne has tomatoes, and that's what I order when I have occasion to go to Heartbreakers now, because it does have tomatoes on it. Uh This is something to think about as a restaurateur. If you are only interested in creating the food you want to create and your customers have to take it the way you put it out, that's your absolutely your call. If you're interested in someone like me who happens to have a podcast that reviews vegan restaurants, if you if you don't if you're not interested in 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 not bending the rules, but having a policy on this sort of thing, then you might end up hearing about it. (laughs) on a podcast. And, and this is, I'm not meaning this in blackmail, but this is one of those things like there are, there are food critics, there are Michelin food critics, there are the New York times food critics, the times out lots and lots of publications and podcasts do this kind of review. And the question becomes, you know, especially since you don't know who is going to review the food that you, that you gave them, uh, when, when they show up, I don't, I didn't want them to know that I was going to review them. I just was going to see what the food was like, tried it and went, these are the things that I think are challenges to this restaurant succeeding. A success story for me is vegan on the fly. They are enthusiastic. They're willing to work with you, whatever they can do for you, they do. And the food is outstanding. So I go there absolutely as often as I can. I've reviewed them on the show before, but I'm, I might just have to review them again because wow, is the food delicious. So, you know, think about that. Think about how you want to 
appear as a restaurant in a place that's as competitive as New York City, because when the competition is fierce, businesses have to set themselves apart somehow. And to me, customer service is one of the best ways to do that. Because even if your food is amazing, if you treat your customers like crap, you're not going to get business. Now, I'm not saying they treated me like crap. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that if that happens, that's something that I weigh in on whether or not I will return and whether or not I will talk about the show on my, on, talk about the show, talk about the restaurant on my show and how well I view it and how often I will return both as a personal patron and as someone who heads a group that goes and explores different vegan restaurants all over New York City. This is a city of eight point some odd million people and I get that I'm just one tiny person and I still want to support the restaurants that work with me and that have vegan food. Alrighty, I hope that you have enjoyed today's episode. As I said, the links to various and sundry uh, containers and things like that are going to be in the show notes. I'm, I'm going to use Amazon because th- that's easiest for most people. If you can find them at, at other stores, please feel free. Uh, so I'm going to put containers. I'm going to put silverware. You can use a bandana, but I'll, I'll put a couple links to the cloth napkins. And also, if you are interested, like I've, like I've been talking about, if you're interested in having me review your place, uh, drop me a line and let me know. I, I have a backlog of restaurants that I'm reviewing, but I would love to review your place too. And uh, also, yeah, I, I have started an events side of my business, believe it or not. It's going to be all, it's going to be events with style, substance, and sustainability, because that's what I really am interested in is uh, Creative Earthlings events is another arm of the Creative Earthlings empire. Dun, dun, dun. And what that's about is creating events that have style, substance, and sustainability that are vegan and cruelty-free and re- all as much as possible renewable resources. So if you want an event like that, if you're planning a wedding or a party or any sort of luncheon and you want to work with someone who will work with you on making your event truly spectacular and sustainable, drop me a line and let's work together. Until next time, I remind you that I am Isolde Trachtenberg for the Creative Solutions Podcast and today's Vegan Life Solutions episode. And I remind you to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2023. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, keep living what you believe in. Thank you.